Hey, everybody, welcome back to another edition of Open Sports Page. I'm Sid Rosenberg. And I'm Amber Wilson. Plenty to get to today on this Inauguration Tuesday, by the yes. way. Including controversy in the lingerie bowl. I know this girl, by the way. <laughs> and I do know her. I'm on her, uh, on her MySpace page. And the NBA trying to boost its revenue. But we begin, as always, with the front sitting page. on the edge of my seat yes. until that story. Rebo. Earlier today, Barack Obama was inaugurated as our nation's 44th president. The Obama inauguration has crossed over from politics to sports and beyond with numerous high-profile athletes speaking about the president during the inaugural bash, including Tiger Woods and Magic Johnson. 62 years ago, Jackie Robinson broke baseball's color barrier. Now today, we have our first black president. Sid, your thoughts today on this historic, historic day? Pretty cool. You know, I'm a guy that voted for John McCain. I've been a Republican my whole life. I've got liberal social views, obviously, so I'm kind of somewhere down the middle. But... Truth be told, I did not vote for Barack Obama. That did not stop me from watching today. And look, I, I'm the first to admit the guy had a magnificent campaign. And, and, I, and I said this right after the election. I've got a four-and-a-half-year-old daughter and a two-month-old son, and I want things to improve in this country. And if Barack Obama's the guy to do it, all the power to him. He is an incredible speaker. In my lifetime, you know, I, was, uh, I wasn't born when Kennedy was assassinated, obviously. In my lifetime, I've never seen anything like this guy. Just, he's just... He's, uh, he's awe-inspiring, he really, and I think he did a great job today. He's the political rock star of our generation, yeah, which is. JFK was to his generation. Yeah. Your daughter and your son will never know a country without a black president. By the That's time true. that they can really realize what has happened, you know, it, it would have already occurred, and they probably won't really you know, understand the depth of how far we have come, even in just my lifetime. Sure. Which hasn't been nearly as long as Sid's lifetime. Not nearly as long. <laughs> no. but, you know, you talk about the black president and my kids, and... and I talked about this for a couple of days as well, and I was talking about it just today with Chuck Todd, who's the chief White House correspondent. And there was nobody in the history of this country who's had as much pressure on them as Barack Obama. And unfortunately, right. if Barack Obama does not succeed, and it won't be because of Barack Obama, it'll be the people around him, then it'll be difficult to get another black president in there. Mm -hmm. You know, if he does a great job, then this could be the, the door opens. But if he does a bad job, then it'll be, hey, we had that black president, and he did a miserable job. So think about the pressure that's on Barack Obama saving a country and saving a race, practically. Right. And when you watch him up there with all those hundreds of thousands of people millions. gathering, yeah, millions, Two and actually, a half million. in Washington, D.C., braving the freezing cold weather to see this man speak, you think, oh, that must be so cool to be him. But I have to say, I would never want to be him because yeah. of yeah. the pressure. Yeah. I mean, it's, when expectations are that high, it's nearly impossible to live up to the hype. Fortunately for Barack Obama, we're coming from such a low place right, right. in our economy and right. society that perhaps any headway would seem like grand strides. Absolutely. What do you think about the uh, the smell of the porta potties out there in D.C. today? You ever you know, go on those things, by the way? I, I know. Ooh, he's Nor could I bring the cold, I don't think. But oh, his speech God. was phenomenal, and it I did was. watch every second of yeah, it. I was, I was glued to the television. He was great. Now, now the real work begins with Barack Obama. That's his job. John Gruden, uh, Gruden, I should say, Amber, has been unemployed for less than a week, and already rumors are swirling that he could have a brand new job. Just, uh, <laughs> that's amazing. Just not in the NFL. Notre Dame, which nearly fired Charlie Weiss after finishing 7-6 and six this season, is reportedly considering replacing Weiss with Gruden. This is not true, by the way. No. After National Signing Day on February 4th. I, I, I heard this. Andy talked about this on his radio show this morning. Right. I'm telling you, it's not true. No. Weiss is going nowhere. Gruden is going nowhere. I, I know people who hate Notre Dame and hate Charlie Weiss are like, oh, this could happen. Listen to me. It's not happening. Charlie Weiss is going nowhere. And Gruden is going nowhere except for watching all the football games next season on television, and then he'll jump in wherever sure. one of those coaches fails. And that's, we will see John Gruden after this next football Agreed. season. Agreed. It gets, it gets back to the T.O. thing. Is Dallas going to cut T.O.? Why are they not going to cut him? Because they owe him too much money. Notre right. Dame is not getting rid of Charlie Weiss with all that money left on that contract. It's not going to happen. He's coming back. Gruden will do some spots on NBC or CBS for the football season. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like I was talking to a Jet fan today who was upset they hired, they hired uh, Rex Ryan right. because John Gruden's available. Charlie Weiss is not going anywhere. John Gruden is not going to Notre Dame. Gruden will be back in the NFL, like you said, next year. I absolutely agree. Yeah. Because right now, the only positions where he could take is Oakland, perhaps Ugh. Kansas City. We don't know what's going on there. We know Gruden would never go back to Oakland. He's already been there and done right. that. Right. Kansas City, we don't really know what's happening with Herm Edwards. Well, Pioli I, likes I don't him. Think Pioli likes him. The guy who took over, Scott Pioli, the former personnel guy from New England, likes John Gruden. And, and the Herm Edwards thing is still up in the air. So right. that's a, a possibility, it, so it's a but possibility, not likely. possibility, but yeah. unlikely because most people at this point think Herm's going to get – 
one more year. Okay. There and you that's, go. you know, so maybe uh, we'll see Gruden in Kansas City, at, you know, again. Next in, year. In 2010. Okay, there you go. We'll there see. you go. Still more to come here on the OS plea. It, it, and by the way, nobody wants the darn Notre Dame job, <laughs> right. including models outraged by nudity. Back page coming up next. Think you can complete the drive, play today, and get an automatic entry to win daily prizes, two tickets to the big game, and a brand new car. Start your drive today at opensports.com. Back here on the OSP, time now to check out what's burning up the back page. That's right, Amber, and this is literally burning up the back page. The sixth <laughs> annual Lingerie Bowl, we're all looking forward to this, is set to air during halftime of Super Bowl 43 on pay-per-view, but not without any drama after struggling to find a location for the game. The Lingerie Football League decided to play its game at a nudist colony, which, by the way, i got to tell you, I didn't even know they still existed. Did you know nudist that? Nudist colonies? Yeah. yeah of course. Okay. Where, where, where would they have gone? Well, I don't know. I just thought they... they Nobody wants to get nude anymore? No, I guess not. Well, you've obviously been to a couple. No. So, decided to play its game in a nudist nice. colony, which, along with a pay dispute, has caused some of the models to quit. The girls are upset because they have a hard enough time... That's funny. They have a hard enough time dealing with negative stigmas and playing at a nudist colony doesn't help. And I know one of the girls, New York Giants girl on MySpace, that's mm -hmm. her address, New York Giants girl, Reba Sky, who's been in Playboy, been on Howard Stern, the whole thing. Gorgeous, by the way, and a great I ass. I think she may have been the one quoted, or there was a few it was girls her, yes. quoted in this ar her. article yeah. Yeah. Uh, complaining about how playing at a nudist colony were, will lower their credibility. They already have such <laughs> a, their a hard time being taken seriously because of what they wear when they're playing these games, which is more than amusing coming from a woman who has posed naked yeah. in Playboy. Yeah, exactly. Not that there's anything wrong with nudity or posing naked in Playboy. Well, I'm not suggesting that, but well, I am you're suggesting... You're dying to get that gig. I'm suggest What? No, I'm suggesting that if you do so, though, I don't think that you can then Complain. play the other side of the fence here sure. and go, oh, well, we would never want to play the nudist colony. We're sure. so offended that people talk about the lingerie we wear. No, well, I, that's like I had Lisa Guerrero on my radio show. You know, Lisa right. Guerrero. Right, and this is and you asked her about, about her, her breasts. Boobs, right, at the play and way. she freaked out. Freaked on out on me. I'm like, are those real? And she's Although, like, that's an inappropriate question. I'm like. Let, baby, you're naked and playboy. I can ask about anything I want. It is, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you that you open up the fence to that of course. level of thinking. Well, like, I wouldn't ask you that. Of the male chauvinist. Show. No, you shouldn't. Uh, Lisa Guerrero, though, was a sportscaster, was so a maybe though, she man. was a little bit. Whatever you pay for those. Oh, my good God. Mm -hmm. Desperate to help reverse its fortunes, the NBA has lifted a long standing ban that prohibited selling courtside or TV visible ad spots to hard liquor companies. It's a shame. At least 20 of the league's teams have deals with hard liquor sponsors, and now they are all allowed to also post the ads on their team websites and other retail locations. Are you surprised in this economy that the NBA is bending over backwards now? I'm surprised. Allowing this to happen. I'm surprised. The NBA does anything that involves morality surprises me. You know, we just had a story yeah, last week okay. about Eddie Curry naked in a limousine. I mean, I don't That's not really a reflection on the NBA, though. I well, mean, of course it is. Well, it sounds like a Isaiah specific Thomas. issue to Eddie. Well, no, yeah, the Knickerbocker organization. Yeah, that, that's and, a, okay. Uh, how about Dwayne Wade, the biggest superstar this week, comes out and, right. and is giving out STDs? How about Kobe Bryant? I mean, the NBA has dealt with these issues for years. In fact, of all the leagues, I think the NBA is the worst. Maybe Every player so. smokes pot. Maybe so, but you know what? Unfortunately, there isn't a league in this world, whether it be hockey, you know, even tennis players, I'm sure. Any league that has athletes that are regarded in a high you know, way by fans, the fame, True, but, the but, money, but they the all NBA's tend the to have these issues. I think the NBA is the worst. The NBA and the NFL are the worst. I think hockey and baseball NFL's are generally regarded. Bad. Yeah, NFL is pretty bad. I, I, yeah. I think, well, I don't know. Baseball has had its fair share of issues as well. Yeah, but not like I mean, that. it's not like Dwayne Wade's the only one cheating on his wife when you have Alex Rodriguez on the cover of every... True, tabloid true. cheating on his wife uh, as well. That's fair, that's fair. Or Derek Jeter notoriously sleeping with every person Well, that's in okay, though. He's a single guy. He's, he's a single guy. He's a single guy. That's okay. I'm then. sure if you wanted it, by the way, you can call or him. Or spreading on. STDs to everybody, because right. that's, that's been a, a that's big a rumor different. about him. The NBA leads all the leagues in that. The NBA does. Yes, they lead the league in spreading STDs. I think, you know what, I just don't think that uh, people care about hockey, so I think that's why we don't hear about those guys as much. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> now, I don't know what the answer is. I'm just telling you that the NBA, to me, is kind of hypocritical because they're the one league that, that, that has its issues and uh, shouldn't, shouldn't really worry about it. Well, I do think it's, it's amusing that it, I th it definitely shows how low we have 
income yeah. financially for all of these. Oh, we'll do anything. You know, it, oh, absolutely. It, 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 it's, it's a business after all. I mean, I'm, we're going to get this business. show sponsored. We'll take anybody. Condom ads, you know, liquor ads, you know, weed. Can we we don't not, care. Though? Whatever we you want to do. We don't care. Weed. Just... Those mass corporations that sell weed. <laughs> right. That's right. going to do it for us here like on the NBA. <laughs> Open Sports page. Make sure you tune in every day for the latest in sports news and opinions. Charles Oakley once told me he's a two-star on my radio show that 87% of the NBA smokes weed. 87%. Well, I think 87% of the general population probably smokes weed, so that's probably What does that not. say for our staff in here today? Well, look at all the people behind the camera. <laughs> yeah, for Amber Wilson, I'm Sid Rosenberg, and I don't smoke weed, by the way. Don't forget to <laughs> anymore. check anymore. Don't forget to check out the Sid Rosenberg Show online daily, 6 to 10 a.m. Eastern Time, every single weekday in one of two places, either SidRosenberg.com or 790theticket.com. And, of course, keep it right here at OpenSports.com, with the future of sports on the web. It's open. Would you smoke if they were going to sponsor us? <laughs> <laughs>